morning friends in the last lecture we had studied the proximate analysis of a coal today we will discuss about the ultimate analysis of a coal the determination of carbon and hydrogen nitrogen sulfur ash and oxygen contained in the coal sample is known as the ultimate analysis of a coal this ultimate analysis of a coal is important to study the heat balances in the chemical processes where coal is fuel now we will see each element separately this ultimate so known as a elemental analysis because these determine these carbon and hydrogen nitrogen sulfur and oxygen are determined in the elemental form now determination of carbon and hydrogen this carbon and hydrogen in the coal sample is determined by using a combustion tube this is a combustion tube where the coal sample is going to be burned there is a inlet for oxygen that is dry oxygen is passed through this combustion tube where when the coal sample is heated this oxygen react with the coal sample and hydrogen <coughs> in sample is oxidized into the water vapor this hydrogen is react with this dry oxygen and converted into the water vapor whereas the carbon contained in coal sample is oxidized into the carbon dioxide gas now this combustion tube is attached to the two u shaped tube in which previously when calcium chloride is placed in a one tube whereas potassium hydroxide is placed in the another tube that is calcium chloride is also previously wet whereas potassium hydroxide is also previously wet this calcium chloride absorb the water vapor obtained from this combustion tube whereas this potassium hydroxide absorb the carbon dioxide obtained from this combustion tube now when the coal sample is heated this oxygen react with this carbon and hydrogen contained present in the coal sample when this carbon is converted into carbon dioxide and hydrogen is converted into the water vapor there is a filter which allow to pass only carbon dioxide gas and water vapor through this filter now when this water vapor enter into this calcium chloride this calcium chloride absorb the water vapor so there is a increase in the weight of calcium chloride there is a increase in the weight of a calcium chloride similarly when the carbon dioxide gas is passes through this potassium hydroxide the there is a increase in the weight of potassium hydroxide now this increase in the weight of a calcium chloride gives the amount of hydrogen present in the coal sample this hydrogen atomic weight is a 2 and water has a 18 carbon has a 12 and carbon dioxide as a 44 means the amount of carbon present in the coal sample amount of carbon is equal to that is that is that is 12 upon 44 into increased in the weight of potassium hydroxide increased in weight of potassium hydroxide gives the amount of carbon present in the coal sample whereas percentage of carbon in the coal sample is calculated that is 12 upon 44 into increased in the weight of coal sample increase in weight of koh upon amount of coal sample taken amount sorry not a amount that is the weight of sample taken into we can calculate the percentage of carbon similarly we can calculate the percentage of hydrogen in the coal sample that is amount of hydrogen is equal to amount of hydrogen is equal to 2 upon 18 into 
increased in weight of increased in weight of calcium chloride increase in the weight of calcium chloride that gives the amount of hydrogen in the cold sample so percentage of hydrogen is equal to 2 upon 18 into increased in the weight of a sample increase sorry increase in weight calcium chloride upon weight of coal sample taken into 100 in this manner we can calculate the percentage of a carbon and percentage of a hydrogen now this carbon is the desirable content this carbon decide the calorific value of a coal this carbon and hydrogen both are the combustible substances but this carbon is useful for the coal whereas this hydrogen is converted into the water vapor and it may it affect the calorific value next we will see the return of nitrogen by the gelda methods second is the determination of a nitrogen this nitrogen is determined by the gelda method in this method the coal sample is heated with the concentrated sulfuric acid and copper sulfate in a Zeldahl flask. This Zeldahl flask is the long neck flask which is used for heating the coal sample. Now, in this case, this process is known as the Zeldahl digestion process in which coal sample is heated with the sulfuric acid and copper sulfate to convert it into the ammonium sulfate. This coal is reacted with sulfuric acid in presence of copper sulfate and converted into ammonium sulfate that is the ammonium this nitrogen this nitrogen obtained from this coal means this coal sample the nitrogen present in the coal sample when react with the sulfuric acid it is converted into the ammonium sulfate this nitrogen is obtained from the coal sample and this process is known as a Zeldahl digestion process now the solution obtained of ammonium sulfate is taken into the distillation flask or down water flask the second part in the second part is known as a Zeldahl distillation process in this process this ammonium sulfate reacted with this NaOH that's NH4 twice SO4 is react with this NaOH to convert it into NaOH and convert it into Na2SO4 plus NH4OH that is ammonium hydroxide. This ammonium hydroxide decompose to give that is this ammonium hydroxide to give ammonia and water molecule NH3 plus H this NH4 twice SO4 on NaOH on heating it is converted into Na2SO4 thrice SO4 and NH4OH this ammonia obtained is distilled over through this distillation column and, and collected into the conical flask which contain excess of known volume of sulfuric acid means this conical flask already contained the sulfuric acid which is the known quantity and it should be taken into the excess so this ammonia obtained should be react with this sulfuric acid now this sulfuric acid is a unused sulfuric acid they are used sulfuric acid by the ammonia and another part is what unused sulfuric acid this unused sulfuric acid is react with the sodium hydroxide that is by the back titration method that is known as a back titration method that is unused sodium hydroxide is titrated with the sodium hydroxide and calculate the volume of unused ones unused sulfuric acid from this volume of used acid is calculated 
and percentage of nitrogen is calculated by volume of acid used volume of acid used into of acid normality of acid in that is upon volume of coal taken means this ammonia volume of acid used normality of acid in 1.4 this volume of acid used is calculated by the back titration method in this manner we can calculate the percentage of nitrogen in the coal sample next is the determination of sulfur sample is determined by the gravimetric analysis method this known amount of a coal sample is heated into the bomb calorimeter the residue of a sulfur is treated with the acid and it is oxidized to convert into the sulfur this sulfate is treated with the barium solution means where the sulfate obtained from the coal sample is it is converted into the barium sulfate form that is 32 is the molecular weight of sulfur that is barium sulfate is 233 grams means amount of a sulfur present in the coal sample amount of sulfur is calculated by 32 upon 233 into weight of barium sulfate form this weight of a barium sulfate that is obtained by the gravimetric analysis this should be weight dry completely this barium sulfate should be dry completely and then weight that is the weight of barium sulfate gives the amount of a sulfur present that is percentage of sulfur in coal sample is equal to that is 32 upon 233 into weight of barium sulfate upon weight of coal sample taken sample into 100 that is the percentage of sulfur in this manner we can calculate the amount of sulfur present in the coal sample next is the determination of a ash in the coal sample this ash is already determined in the proximate analysis of a coal sample we have already seen this that ash is determined in the proximate analysis in this method that is determination of a ash this ash coal sample is heated in the muffler furnace at 750 degree centigrade for one hour when all the coal sample is burned the remaining residue is the weight of ash next is the that is next is what that is the oxygen content that is amount of oxygen present in the coal sample now this oxygen is determined by subtracting all the component that is from 100 that is 100 minus percentage of carbon plus percentage of hydrogen plus percentage plus percentage of ash and percentage of sulfur gives the amount of oxygen present in the coal sample now in this manner we studied ultimate analysis of a coal sample in the next lecture we will see the liquid fuel thank you